Welcome to episode 510 of Salcedo Paranormal, and tonight I'm continuing my review, review of the complete books of Charles Fort. As always, you can find all episodes of the show, along with links to social media and other ways to contact me, at the uh, podcast page, and that is salcedoparanormal.podbean.com. That's S-A-L-S-I-D-O paranormal.podbean.com. Always happy to hear from you all, whether you have comments or questions or topic suggestions or stories of paranormal experiences, whether they're your own or from others that you trust. Happy to either read those or have you join me on the show to talk about them. Thank you all for listening, whether you make it to the live streams on Discord or if you listen on the podcast or YouTube feeds or on the Trouble Minds Radio Network, KUAP Digital Broadcasting. There you can hear replays of two episodes of the show every night at 6 p.m. Pacific, 9 p.m. Eastern, right before Trouble Minds Radio comes on. As always, I want to thank Michael Strange, host of Trouble Minds Radio, as well as Liam Martin, host of the Exile Minds podcast, for producing these shows and putting them, putting them up on the station as you hear them with the music and everything and um, taking care of all that and even in some cases editing them to uh, make them fit the radio format better. Really appreciate that. And uh, if you'd like to support the show, there are some different ways to do that. You can always share the show with others and rate and review it on your podcast platform of choice. Also, um, you can check out my Patreon page uh, and um, check out the the extra content there. Uh, Starting in January, there will be one extra episode per month of True Paranormal Stories on the Web. There is one episode of that up there already, and uh, those will be available to all membership tier levels. Also, I forgot to mention in my last episode, since I'm sort of rusty at this still, coming back from a long break, um, I've written some paranormal uh, fiction and nonfiction books you can check out over on Amazon. And um, and then also, if you'd like to just make a one-time donation, you can do that through PayPal. And uh, right now, that's the only... Um, service I use for donations due to uh, technical difficulties uh, with my eyes and then just with the platforms in general. So um, sorry about that, but that's the way it is right now. Um, Also, um, help is never expected, but always appreciated as there are expenses in making these shows from equipment to research materials to uh, travel expenses for whenever I do uh, go out to any kind of events of having to do with the paranormal. So um, last year was, of course, the Mid-Michigan Paracon. I will go back to that again at some point. I'm not sure if it'll be next year, but um, it will happen again, and uh, looking forward to that when it does. But um, that would also there would also be expenses for travel to other events if I ever do go to other things. So um, I think that takes care of all of that. So this is, um, as I said, there was a long... A long break there where I didn't really get to do any shows. But um, if you look through my podcast page or YouTube page and um, just do a search for, um, I think it's called Review the Complete Books of Charles Fort. If you go back and, and put that in the, or even probably just Charles Fort, um, put that in the search, you should be able to find all of these shows from before. And, uh, and then going forward and... Uh, That way you can listen to them in the order of um, sort of when they came out. Of course, they're in episode order, not so much. I don't really call them part one or part two because there's probably probably over ten parts already. I mean, maybe even more. Uh, This is a collection of four books that I'm um, sort of summarizing and reviewing here. So, And I'm only on the third one of the four. So, um, yeah, I didn't bother putting a part one or part two in there. But... um, so yeah, that's uh, that's what we're doing tonight. I use AI to summarize chapters from uh, his the, the complete books of Charles Fort, and I read those and then just talk about the um, the ideas that they that he mentions that are summarized in um, in this document I have for the show. So that's sort of um, for anyone that is for, is newer to the show doesn't know how um, how I do this. That is. Uh, how that works. And it's been a lot of fun uh, just 
to give everyone sort of a very vague summary of what uh, we've already talked about. It's been a lot of fun looking back at what Charles Fort researched and the, all the different accounts and his ideas on how to explain so many odd things, so many uh, what would later be called uh, Fortean things, Fortean phenomenon, and that was named after him. Um, odd things that could not easily be explained away, at least not according to him. And I would have to say there's a lot of things there, um, just based on what I remember, that I agree with him. There, there's um, It's hard to explain all these things away, I think, with um, sort of conventional terms and, or conventional ideas in from science um, in some cases. So anyway, enough of me uh, rambling on about that. So this is um, getting back to, again, the third book in this set, and it's called Lo, L-O. Uh, and this book is a lot, mainly about teleportation in, in a lot of ways. So this is um, getting to chapter three of this book here. And um, so this chapter discusses reports of edible substances falling from uh, the sky in Asia Minor, uh, possibly the biblical manna. And um, I didn't think to look into that, but um, if you look it up, it's M A N. Um, so M A N N A. Uh, he suggests it may represent uh, nourishment and guidance from a larger organism or existence when needed. Uh, like nourishment sent to an embryo. That's an odd but interesting idea there. Uh, the conventional explanation is that these um, substances are a lichen picked up by, so some kind of plant material, picked up by whirlwinds in Algeria and dropped in Asia Minor. But uh, Fort argues against this. Uh, no such showers are reported in Algeria or places in between. So basically his point is that there's never really been any reports that he could find about similar events or about anything being picked up like that on that large of a scale from that area. So Charles Fort uh, mentions tumbleweeds as a rough analogy. They aren't reported to fall in showers, though, uh, let me see, though carried by whirlwinds. So I guess they, he means that they do move around, but they're not always carried. Uh, they're not always brought in. I don't know. I'm not, not really sure how, how that works, but uh, he says the lichen explanation seems inadequate. So uh, Charles Fort believes nothing, absolutely, uh, even his own writings. That's another thing that he, and he talks about, but he accepts with reservation that an edible substance not traced to earth has fallen from the sky in that area. I do like sort of his, um, his ability. And this will sound familiar to people that listen to, um, to trouble minds radio ability to sort of, um, put together these ideas as to what could be going on there and, and, um, try to figure things out as well as he can, but also not, uh, really be committed to them as, these are this is actually what's happening this is this is um this is the truth this is what happened and there's no debate he doesn't do that he's just sort of puts together ideas and um and shares them to see what people think so and now i lost my spot uh let me see here so okay here we go uh so fort proposes viewing existence as one as one organism in which case the showers represent a kind of purposeful distribution purpose in nature is uh feasible i guess in this way without theological interpretations so um of course theological having to do with um i'm guessing religion there uh and uh so in summary uh four questions conventional explanations for the showers of this um uh, mana in quotation marks in Asia Minor, instead suggesting uh, that it points to nourishment distributed 
uh, on purpose in nature when viewed as a single organism. And um, that's an amazing idea that sort of all of reality is its own organism. And, and um, th that's why some of these things happen. And that sor sort of goes against the, um, this other idea that I think he for has kind of brought it before in previous books where these uh, downfalls could be sort of um, come from other lands as uh, accidents. So, but, and again, that's just, that just shows that he's sort of considering all these different possibilities. So, um, so anyway, that's the end of that chapter. So we'll move on to the next one here, chapter four. And uh, in this chapter, Charles Fort discusses various mysterious events like stones and objects appearing or disappearing, including clothes uh, shooting up into the air and vanishing. Conventional explanations like hoaxes are considered, of course, um, by a lot of people. And as uh, as always the case, I don't doubt that there are some cases where things are hoaxed, but as I, I always say with these things, the paranormal and unexplained, there's just been way far too many experiences and reports of uh, accounts of things that happen for every single one to be faked or misinterpreted or exaggerated, in my opinion. And I'm not the only one, based on what I've heard and read, I am not the only one that uh, that thinks that way. And in fact, I was listening to a podcast the other day where that was sort of brought up. So, um, I believe, if I'm not mistaken. Anyway, uh, Fort proposes the idea of teleportation, a force that can transport objects uh, evidenced by accounts of things like slow falling stones. This force may force may be I almost said fort force may be unconscious in humans or criminally used. So it says children seem to be implicated in many accounts, suggesting they tap some occult force in quotation marks there. Uh, more prevalent early in earlier in human history. Uh, the other, the author, so Fort, entertains notions like teleportation, uh, or teleportative, I'm sorry, voyages between planets. So here's someone that is thinking about teleportation back in the early 1900s. To me, that's amazing. Not to say um, that people, the further back you go, people are not smart. I don't believe that. I believe um, that there's just different kinds of intelligence and different sort of um ways that people think about things and i so i don't i don't i've never supported the idea that the further back you go the less smart people are um but at the same time it's a, it's a, it's neat to see I, i'm not really um i'm not really doing well with my words here what i mean is that it's just really amazing to see these kinds of ideas being brought up this far back and um so anyway uh, moving on here, it says, uh, let me see here, okay. Um, Fort allows for the idea that beings from other worlds may have visited uh, Earth via teleportation, concealing their origin. Some may have affinity for human barbarism if they are throwbacks uh, on their own planet. And so that's just getting back to this idea of, and in a way of aliens and other beings from other places. So, um, but uh, I just love that he's sort of using teleportation to um, apply it to so many different things here. So um, let me see here. This says uh, a case of many uh, dying from a mysterious fog in Belgium is raised. Perhaps not natural, but a poison gas attack by alien beings. But the author relents as conventional explanations arise. So he was thinking, I guess, maybe that this could have appeared from nowhere, um, but then thought better of it after. Now, um, going back to the the fog, though, fog does seem to be, and fogs and mists do seem to be at the center of, or at least connected to paranormal events as well. So, um, 
let me see. This chapter is ending right here. So it says, for its aim is to connect strange phenomena dismissed conventionally as isolated oddities, uh, positing intelligently directed teleportation as one possibility uh, requiring consideration. So that's where that chapter ends. But yeah, just, um, and I think I mentioned this before, um, that there's a lot of stories of uh, people that have had experiences and either before, during, or after these experiences, there is some kind of a, a fog or a mist uh, in that area where these things happen. So just wanted to point that out there real quick. Um, chapter 5. Uh, Fort Charles Fort describes mysterious events like showers of soot and stones at the home of uh, Mr. Mc McLaughlin in Ireland occurring in daylight with witnesses present. He argues, uh, Fort argues that uh, conventional explanations from science or even spiritualists uh, fail to adequately account for such occurrences. There is a bias on both sides to force agreements with prior beliefs. I do sort of like that as well, in a way, where, again, I do think any kind of uh, um, certainty or believing that we know everything is not good, whether whatever way sort of people want to go with it, with whether it's scientific or um, or in ideas from the past of of I, I, not that I'm I'm against religion, but just ideas of um, it has to be this because of these teachings from from before. So, um, but anyway, it says various showers are recounted: uh, nails, corn, money, and coal, baffling witnesses and investigators. Charles Fort propose, proposes a force of teleportation could be natural and unconscious in humans. That's an amazing idea. It seems like what he's suggesting there is that somehow people are causing these things to vanish from where they're at and then appear in the sky so that they fall. Now, I don't know. It doesn't really make clear there if, if it mean if he means that it's the people themselves that are unconsciously doing this to themselves or if it's just something that happens that people in general do and other people happen to be sort of in the path of these events and then that's why they're there to notice them um so i don't know but that's an that's a neat concept there i never really thought of before sort of part of that whole co-creation idea except that it's having to do with um with these falling objects instead of the usual other events, uh, paranormal things. Um, let me see here. Well, so I spot again. Okay. Uh, it says at Swanton Nover's rectory in England, large quantities of various oils mysteriously appeared, driving the, the uh, rector out. I'm guessing they mean one of the people that, that was stationed there. A young maid was accused, of course, of trickery, but denied it. Um, so that's odd. Oils. That's not something you can easily just pick up and grab and, unless it's in a container. Uh, Charles Fort questions the uh, accusations and conventional explanations uh, used to dismiss the case. He points out contradictory accounts and statements around the quantities involved. So that's how there's now a real clear um, idea of how much of the, this, these oils actually vanished and reappeared, or at least reappeared. Uh, it says, in, in summary, this chapter catalogs strange accounts of various objects appearing or disappearing, questioning the bias on both sides to dismiss them and proposing a, a force like teleportation as one potential explanation uh, needing consideration. 
So that's the end of that chapter. I think we'll have enough time to get through at least part of one more chapter. We'll see. Um, this is chapter six. And again, this is from low L O exclamation mark. Uh, Charles Fort offers the story of statues and holy images allegedly uh, bleeding in Templemore, Ireland in 1920 as data worth considering rather than uh, rejecting outright. He suggests phenomena like this could be explained by the concept of teleportation, fluids appearing mysteriously at certain points. And that's, again, I love how he's applying these things to um, events that have sort of just been connected to things that maybe they're not actually connected to. Um, priests may have known how to artificially produce effects like blood appearing on images, according to that. Uh, so then he's saying that there could be some kind of a trick involved there, but um, says at the time Ireland was experiencing a period of violence, terror, and turmoil during its fight for independence. Yet huge processions of pilgrims made their way to Templemore to see the reported uh, bleeding statues. Accounts described blood oozing from statues housed in the homes of Thomas Duan and Mrs. Mayer. Water is continuous, uh, has con also continuously appeared in a hollow spot uh, in the room of a devout boy uh, last name was Walsh, who was at the center of the phenomena. Uh, these events and reported healings at these uh, the shrine drew over a million visitors a month with um, tent cities, my gosh, erected to house pilgrims. However, reports of these bleeding statues eventually stopped. Uh, Charles Ford presents the events as part of uh, larger myster mysterious flows and movements uh, of people and substances that could indicate an organic control or maintenance or balance, um, sorry, of balance, even amid violence and disruption. So there we go. That's that chapter. I think that's where I'll stop with the chapters today. Um, so, because. We don't have a whole lot of time left for this episode. Um, and so we'll leave it there. And, but yeah, so this has been a lot of, I hope everyone enjoys doing these, um, these, this review because I've enjoyed it just because of all the ideas that um, the events that Charles Fort collects and catalogs in his books. And then the way he tries to explain them sort of um, what a lot of people do with, in a way with podcasts today. Um, as well, uh, but of course in just a book form. So this has been a lot of fun to do this. I'm looking forward to um, to finishing this series to move on to other books, but also I'm not in a rush either because I do enjoy. I've always wanted to sort of um, check out all of Charles Fort's work on the um, the unexplained or the paranormal or supernatural, and so this has really been great to see reports of um, events going back. Uh, prior to what I'm used to hearing about. And um, so you can find his books, uh, his collected books on Am on Amazon. Uh, that's where I found mine uh, that, the, that I, I sort of have listened to before parts of. And, um, but also you, you can find them other places online too. So um, I think that covers everything. Thank you all for listening. And I will talk to you all on the next episode of Salcedo Paranormal. Take care.